Imagine a world full of vivid images. But what if you couldn't see anything in your mind's eye? A unique human condition makes it difficult to conjure up mental images. Aphantasia. The world around us is saturated with images. So many, in fact, that they have become insignificant and we find ourselves in a state of visual banality. With the advancement of technology, not only are there thousands of images captured by cameras, but now millions can be generated by artificial intelligence models. As we consume things, experiences, people, and images in abundance, it seems that our imagination has atrophied. This may be due to the industrialization of culture, where all objects are deemed the same. The same movie with different actors. The same selfie with different faces. The same landscape with different tourists. In a world of similarities, the imagination withers. Or it may also be that the fast-paced rhythms of consumption can annihilate human time, desire, and the ability to imagine. Sometimes it's easy to confuse imagination with memory. The line between the two is thin. Both linked to time. Memory to the past and imagination to the future. Anticipating, representing, and reinterpreting the present are the exercises of the imagination. It involves recognizing patterns and projecting them. We naturally tend to search for variations, combinations, and patterns. perhaps because we have seen them in nature. And in our own bodies. and we try to replicate them. However, although these connections may seem to be made within our isolated minds, imagination is a result of encountering the world and exchanging with it through technology. Humans have evolved with technology and have allowed us to shape our imagination and create art. There is no such thing as purely human or a technological art. It is a union between humans and non-humans that have always been created. Artificial, artifice, artificium. In its origin, the word referred to art, craftsmanship, and skill, not deception. In recent years, technology has advanced rapidly and brought about a paradigm shift in creation.
It has sparked controversy, fear, revulsion, and fascination, similar to the reaction when the camera was invented. Words can now conjure images in an instant, thanks to the power of prompts. A prompt is a cue used to generate a response, but it can also mean to act quickly or without delay. With prompts, we can instantly bring to life the images we once only imagined. Whether it's a new triptych by Bosch, a surrealist masterpiece by Gertrude Abercrombie, or a thrilling manga adventure from Katsuhiro Otomo. or a documentary photography from the images of Annie Leibovitz. The creation of such images may be better referred to as spawning rather than creating. Spawns can be replicated, combined, and respawned creating combinations, sometimes bizarre or monstrous, that can amplify biases and prejudices based on race, gender, culture, or social status. However, they can also elicit the same emotions as works made without artificial intelligence. The authorship of spawns is difficult to establish, as it could be the coders, creators, or end users. Artistic skills are no longer necessary to produce spawns, and the immediacy could cancel out the gradual capacity for learning. The speed of spawns may cause a global aphantasia that leads to the permanent atrophy of the individual imagination. Or promote a new external and collective imagination. These generative systems are the first sketches for the externalization of collective imagination expanded and connected with machines, organisms, and humans. It is an almost infinite machine for creating images out of the mind.